prayers and fasting that give results. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Glory. Thank you for allowing me to bring your message to your people yet again. Father, open their eyes of understanding by this your word that is about to come their way, that they may know the truth and walk in it as you required of your children. Through your word that we are about to hear and the prayers that will follow, let yokes be broken, let sicknesses be healed, and let diseases and afflictions be routed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, I submit myself unto you, let all that I am going to teach now be your mind, and what you have quickened in my spirit, let your name Lord be glorified, this I ask O Lord. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayer and fasting are spiritual requirements for the ascension to higher levels of spirituality. While fasting does not change God or compel God to do our will, it does help us reach the spiritual level that draws God's attention to us, His children. The several mentions of prayers and fasting in the scriptures are an authentication of their validity as spiritual and God-approved exercises. For instance, in Mark chapter 9, verse 29, Speaking about prayer and fasting, Jesus told the disciples when they were unable to cast out a certain devil from a possessed child. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. What can we learn here? There are certain spiritual works that will not be effective unless you add fasting to your prayers. Another challenge, however, is how to pray and fast effectively to get results. There is always a how to everything that works. Even the disciples of Jesus had to ask him to teach them how to pray. You can see this in Luke 11, verse 1. Let read. And it came to pass, that, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Jesus didn't rebuke nor reprimand the disciple for doing something wrong. Instead, he consented, an affirmation of his approval of their desires. And in Luke 11, verse 2, the Bible says, And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Now, as a child of God, how do you fast? Let's see what the Bible says in Isaiah 58, from verses 3 to 14. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou sayest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness, ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day, to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou sayest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called, the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths, to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, 
and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. From the scriptures, you can see that fasting is not a thing of today, it has been an age-old religious practice of drawing closer to God. In verse 5 of Isaiah 58, he says, Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Here we see that God himself has chosen fasting and prayer as a channel of access to him and the wealth of his powers, and he has also given guidelines on the right way to fast for the best results. So, in order for fasting to be effective or for a fast to produce the desired results, the principles and guidelines outlined above must be followed. And also the ones outlined in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 that says, Moreover when ye fast, be not, as the hypocrites, of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Darily I say unto you, they have their reward. The use of when in the text is proof of the inevitability of fasting if more spiritual successes must be attained. Even our Lord Jesus Christ fasted before fully launching his ministry. We can see this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. Let read. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Moses also fasted. Exodus 24 verse 15 through 18. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and gat him up into the mount, and Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. Therefore, I pray for you, those of you who have begun or are about to begin fasting, may the reasons, purposes, and objectives of your fasting not elude you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree the release of fresh grace and might to complete it as you have purposed in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Father Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and chain every agent of distraction that will come to distract your people and unfocus them from their objectives. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let this exercise be the most rewarding of every spiritual journey that your people have ever embarked upon. Let it bring transformation and an all-round change of levels for them. In the name of Jesus Christ. By this fasting exercise, Lord, let sicknesses, diseases, and all manner of afflictions find their ways out of your people's bodies and occupations, let this period and thereafter be a new dawn and a turnaround era for every one that is engaging in or that shall engage in the spiritual adventure of prayer and fasting, in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Father Lord, based on your word in Psalms 34, verse 10 that says, The young lions do lack, and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Lord, may no one under my voice lack what to eat, drink, pay bills, and live a life of comfort before, during, and after their prayer and fasting exercises. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father Lord, for responding, in Jesus' powerful name, I pray. Amen.